Now what I can't get over is that many Christians that I speak to in my parents' church believe in gravity. And I tell them that the heliocentric model is idolatry. They don't want to understand that the heliocentric model is idolatry because it's the exact opposite of what the Bible says. It, they name all the lights in the sky after false pagan gods of Jupiter, Mars, Saturn, Venus, Mercury. I point out Exodus 23, 13, where God says not to have the names of these false gods in your mouth. And they don't see that the heliocentric model goes out of its way to cause you to violate that. So the heliocentric model is idolatry of Saul Helios Ra, which removed the earth from the center of God's cosmology and replaced it with the sun. Now, I tell these people, I worship the son of the living God, Yeshu, Jesus Christ, Hamashiach, while they worship the son of Saul Helios Ra and replace the earth with the sun in the center of God's cosmology. These people are worshiping gravity as a god because we are taught, maybe you didn't know you, or you forgot, that they say that gravity assembled the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, and every alleged planet after the Big Bang. This is godlike power. Gravity is your god, Newton its prophet, and NASA its disciples. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if there contained a page in Newton's Principia, which is the Scientism's Bible, that says, In the beginning, gravity created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was across the face of the deep, and gravity moved above the waters. Now, I don't believe that. I believe, like I just said, in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the father of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, HaMashiach. That's my God. That's who created the earth, the sun, the moon, and all the stars. Not gravity. Okay, I don't know if you know, but they say after the Big Bang that gravity assembled the earth and everything you see in the sky by attracting all the dust particles and swirling gas that the Big Bang produced from a singularity which they call an infinitesimal point that a previous universe that ran its course and collapsed in on itself, taking time, space, and matter with it. So I, I asked the professor, how can a singularity, where would it itself exist if time, space, and matter collapsed in on itself? Where would this infinitesimal point then exist? That is illogical. Okay, everything they base the heliocentric model on is idolatry and based on Satan. Okay, Saul, Helios, Ra, Saturn, Mars, Jupiter, Apollo, Orion, Artemis. They name their rockets Dragon. Each day of our week is named after a false pagan god. Uh, Moon Day, Tease Day, Wooden's Day, Thor's Day, Frigg's Day, which is the mother of Thor, the wife of Wooden, which is Wednesday, Wooden's Day, Thor's Day, Frigg's Day, Saturn Day, and Sunday, Saul Helios Ra. Okay? The whole model is idolatry, and the god of the heliocentric model is gravity. Now we're told that the observable universe is 36 billion light years across. Each light year is almost 6 trillion miles. And to express the enormity of a trillion anything, a trillion seconds would take 33,000 years to go by. Now, we have these numbers that are Masonic, of the Masonic scumbags who used and loved the numbers 33666. 9-11, and um, that's what FOX stands for. I believe that's a, uh, I forgot which numerology it was, Chaldean or, or Pythagorean, yeah. Anyway, gravity is your God. And 36 billion light years, that's 36 or 366, 666. 
the Earth's alleged axial tilt, 23.4 degrees, if you subtract that from 90, is 66.6 degrees. The alleged first mile in the Earth's curvature is 0.666, with a 7 and some other numerals, but it's 666. The northern, the north and south pole latitudes are 66.6 degrees. Now, go to Google, your favorite search engine, and type in, does the Earth have a mean velocity of 66,600 miles an hour around the sun? And it will say, yes! Do you not see how these mathematical numbers are based on Satan, 666, 33, 911? That's what the heliocentric model is. Gravity is your God, Newton or Einstein its prophet, and NASA its disciples. Now I get these people who tell me, well, you can't debunk math. <coughs> I say you can, because math cannot depict reality. If you had $60 that you wanted to evenly distribute amongst three people, do you know how many ways you could do that? mathematically correct you could give each person $21 bills or a $20 bill or two $10 bills a piece or you could give them $20 in quarters $20 in nickels $20 in pennies there are numerous ways that that is mathematic mathematically correct but you can't just pick one and say well that's reality it is not and when mathematical assumption contradicts observable reality, there's a problem. Okay, you can, math is just the language. Just like the verbal, uh, our written language can be expressed verbally. There's many different langu languages. It's all symbolic. Okay, and everything these Christians say they believe, they don't understand what it truly entails, and that it is idolatry. There are things in observable reality at sea level on the ground of the earth that cannot be debunked. But we're told somewhere high above our heads beyond the Carmen line that they can be debunked and it's actually the opposite. The physics, nature, and mechanics of the earth can be contradicted above the earth in the region they call outer space which is what they say is 36 billion light years across with each light year almost six trillion and and one trillion seconds one trillion measly seconds would take 33,000 years to count to People, don't you understand you are indoctrinated and programmed to instantaneously believe everything these liars tell you? They tell you they're atheists, but they aren't. They pay homage to the false pagan gods. Everything they do is paying homage to these false pagan deities of Sol, Helios, Ra, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, Apollo, Orion, Artemis, and so many more. Gravity is... Has not, when, when I told you to Google, does the Earth have a mean velocity orbital speed around the sun of 66,600 miles an hour? You have to ask it that way or it'll round it off because they know what's going on and they'll try to round it off to 67,000. So you have to ask, does the Earth have a mean velocity orbital speed around the sun of 66,600 miles an hour, then it will concur. But if you give it a chance to switch it up, they will round it off because they know why people are asking, because this information is out. Now, other information they won't give you is if you Google what don't we know about gravity, the number one response is, however, if we are to be honest, and that's a joke right there, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. So please do not 
interject with the force or occurrence of gravity unless you first know which gravity you're talking about, Newtonian or Einstein. Now what can be demonstrated at sea level on the ground is gas and oxygen will always fill the available volume of a vacuum. So how can the Earth, regardless of shape, be covered in gas and oxygen surrounded by and within an infinite vacuum universe, 666 or 36, mil, 36 billion light years across? The Earth could never keep its coating of gas and oxygen under those circumstances because we can demonstrate that gas and oxygen always fill the available volume of a vacuum. Okay? And you, the only thing you can do is offer gravity. But the reason why they don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way, after you ask Google, what don't we know about gravity, it is because... First of all, it's illogical to then go on and say we only know how it behaves after they have just admitted, however, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. That is illogical. The reason why they have to say that if you ask correctly is because they've never directly detected gravity itself. And as I've said before, people don't know the difference, can't differentiate what gravity itself is and what gravity is doing. So they use the alleged effects and results of gravity to prove gravity itself when they're two different things. If you were shown a, a painting by Pablo Picasso, that couldn't represent him himself. That's what he did. You would need the presence and substance of Pablo Picasso flesh and bones, presence and substance of flesh and bones before you. That is Pablo Picasso, not what he painted. So that's all they got is what they say gravity does or did or will do. There is no current field, wave, beam, ray, or particle of gravity itself on the earth. There is no signature of any movement or existence of energy holding down over a quintillion gallons of water in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. They can't directly detect anything but the water within the water or air above it. There is no force or occurrence of gravity, no force, no fabric of space-time being bent or curved, nothing. Now, they'll be in their fake ISS and they'll throw out a ball of some sort in front of them and it'll curve. And they'll say the reason why it curves is because space-time is curved. Yet, uh, yet on the Earth, uh, things fall straight down. Or you can throw things in a straight line against the wall. It doesn't get curved by anything. So these things magically occur in their fake outer space infinite vacuum, but not on the Earth. They cannot be demonstrated. Pressure cannot be demonstrated without a container or tank. You cannot bring propane home without a tank. Sulfur hexafluoride has to be in a container. Do you understand that all gas disperses at high velocity? And the reason why you don't feel it? Because it doesn't have the same kind of weight that something you put on a weight scale does. It doesn't have a downward vector to register on a weight scale. It goes in all directions evenly and independently. That's why an ounce of wa liquid water is not the same as an ounce of evaporated water after phase change. Liquid water is bonded together. It's liquid. But when it evaporates, it's no longer bonded. It can't be the same because each molecule, if that's the word you understand... I've never seen a molecule, but each molecule or atom of water goes in its own direction and therefore cannot be weighed. You must have a container to keep it there. When it is out in the, the air of our earth, it disperses. Hot kettles, the steam rises, does not have a downward vector. It goes up. Okay, so gravity could not pull down all the gas and oxygen to 
be the same shape and outside surface of a giant ball. That's the way they depict it, that all the gas and oxygen, the thermosphere, and five atmospheres above the earth are all curving around the earth, being pulled back to the center. Well, I ask, how'd they get up there if they are obedient to gravity? Anything obedient to gravity has a downward vector when it's not supported. If you drop a microphone, it falls. They say that's gravity, pulling it back to the center of the earth or curving it back to the center of the earth. How does gas and oxygen get up that high to then decide it's going to turn around and come back down? Gas and oxygen could never exist or coincide directly next to or within an infinite vacuum universe. 36 billion light years across. It is illogical and insane. And then these liars want to tell us what the sun is made of and I have I always have a hard time pronouncing this word spectros spectroscopy I got to write it out and look at it but they do this through the emission of light but they don't tell you that the same color wavelength the sun produces it's a candle light from a candle light from any source on the earth is the same spectrum as that of sunlight the only difference is sunlight spectrum is brighter, but they're the same colors in the same arrangement. Okay? And we know that light from a candle is not what they say the sun is made up of. Helium and all the junk they say is going on. Okay? Fusion and all that garbage. All right? All light has the same color spectrum of light. The only difference is the brightness. So you can't tell me they're, they're the same. Or they're not the same. They are the same. The spectrum is the same. The same colors in the same uh, lineup. Same order. The only difference is light from a candle is not as bright as the light from the sun. But if you put them both together, they're the same. Uh, they don't tell you this. What is the sky? What The sky is air. They like to try to describe it as a liquid, but I cannot do that. There is evaporated water in the air. And I don't like to say atmosphere because air doesn't curve. But in the sky, there's water, electricity, magnetism, and gases of different densities. Beyond our sky is not an infinite vacuum, but, it, but water. The water is above the firmament. My God, and don't tell me if you're a pastor that clouds are the firmament because God divided the waters above from the waters below and clouds are produced by the waters below. There can be no division or separation when the waters rain back down on the waters below. No clouds were around when God, the Spirit of God hovered over the deep. He didn't hover over a vacuum. He hovered over the deep waters. He used the firmament to make the deep waters into two bodies of water. The bodies, the, the water below the firmament become the waters of the earth. The deep is not the waters of the earth as it was without form and void. God separated the waters above with a firmament which made two bodies of water. The waters below he gathered unto one place and that became our lake seas and oceans. The waters above the firmament are the waters. It's not an infinite vacuum. Why pastors can't realize this is just cognitive dissonance, uh, low IQ, or they know the truth and just don't give a damn. 